So I have a couple of Bible verses for you today. In Job chapter 42, Job said when he answered the Lord about all the things that had happened. He said, I know that thou can do everything and thou hast no thought that can be withholden from thee. Meaning that everything that he was going through, he understood. He didn't hide knowledge. He didn't hide the facts from Job. Then also in Titus, Paul was wrestling with the Spirit, and he was saying to the other people that were listening to his letter to be of sound doctrine, be sober, be of sound faith, charity and patience, that women should be forms of holiness, not false accusers. So the same was for Job as it was for Paul, one of the apostles of Jesus. All the things that Jesus taught them were to be of good, good mind, sound body, or sound mind, sound body, sound doctrine, to tell the truth, to not stretch the truth. And boy, I've failed that one. I've failed that one numerous times. But I have to tell you something funny. Because with the sober mind and the gifts that God gives you, sometimes things go awry. So the past few years, I've had this house. The house is over a hundred years old and things go wrong and things go really wrong sometimes. And so about a year and a half ago, the bank was wanting my house back. Mind you, this was a house that God has given me. God gave it to me when I was a single parent. I raised my kids here. The house was was not well maintained. The realty company sold it to me for an exasperating price. Um, and things go wrong. And finances aren't always what we need them to be. Insurance doesn't cover things. But you have to remember the words of Job and the words of Titus. Or the letter to Titus from Paul. About being sober-minded thinking clearly, using our brains. So back to the house. So everything was going wrong and has gone wrong. And it's still being ironed out. It's still being worked out with God. God gave me the house. He gave me the house to raise my children in. He put me in a position to be in a community where I've been the outcast. I've been the laughing stock. I was the single mom with the kids that, you know, we didn't have a lot of money. We've always had the piece of junk cars. We've always had um, the servant type jobs. Servant jobs. The laughing stock. Of the community. So on top of everything, about a year and a half ago the bank wanted the house back. So I had to get the house ready to be sold or give them the title back. Unfortunately when the bank did their background uh, checking on the title and all that, they couldn't take the house back. Unbeknownst to me, there was 
some other type of loan that hadn't been paid, and I believe I threw the bill away and just completely forgot about it. But I moved out, rented a small place, heartbroken, losing everything, only to find out that I needed to move back in in about a month and a half. And then moving back in, no furniture, no appliances, no clothes. It, it just became one thing after the other. The water hasn't run for over a year. There's no appliances. The car is broken. The, um, it's just, it's not that the house was in bad disrepair before I left or that I didn't care for it. It's just that things had domino, they, they domino affected each other. The wind blew down the fence. The insurance company wouldn't cover it. The wind blew down a tree, giant holes in the garage roof, um, no electricity. It's just been one thing after the other. But we have to remember that when the toilet doesn't flush, the water doesn't work, the electricity isn't right, the car doesn't want to run, there's no mower to mow the grass, and everybody is just looking at you like you're a fool, give up. God just said, get it together. Hunker down, do the best you can with what I've given you, and everything is going to be okay. These storms are testing us right now. They're testing our resolve of our maturity in Christ. God is testing us to see if we're going to read our Bible, if we're going to trust him with what he's promised us. He promised us that we're not going to be um, all chosen for the same gift. We, we all don't have the same gift. Not, not everyone can go through what I've been through. They can't go through times with no running water. They can't go times without food. They can't go times without clothes or a vehicle. I mean, I've had to walk clear across town just to get something to eat or drink. I've had to do it before. I'm not saying I like any of this. And I'm not saying I like the test. I'm not saying that the test is easy. I'm not saying that my life is perfect before God. What I'm saying is, is he's asking us to take the faith, take the word, and to tie it on the hem of our clothes. Remember those times when, when your shoes had holes in them and all you had was a peanut butter and jelly sandwich to eat? The kids were late for school. The, the principal was angry because the kids were late for school for the 10th time and they were going to get kicked out. That happened to me a lot. That happened to me a lot because I had kids going different directions. They didn't always want to listen. The school had a different idea of what timeliness was. And honestly, food wasn't always an option for us. We had a lot of hard times. We were in one of those food insecure households. There were times when we had to dig in the trash for several years. But God used it all for a purpose. God has always used what he's done in my life for a bigger and better purpose. I'll leave you with this. Even though I purchased a newer car and I made payments on it for over a year and a half, and this happened about a year and a half ago, I got back into my house and I had this brand new car. And I thought to myself, well, I'm doing really good now. I finally have a new car. I'm finally on the top. Look at me go. Yay! And then one day, 
I had a local taxi cab driver pull up to my house. And she says to me, that's my son's car. And I said, what do you mean? This is my car. She said, no, that's my son's car. Well, come to find out, this individual's son had passed away. He had brain cancer. And he had suddenly passed away. And it was her only child. And what I'm trying to say is that the woman was so distressed seeing her son's car. And I knew right away that God was going to say, do something. Do something. If it was your child, what would you do? And I asked her, I said, what do you want to do? She said, well, I'd really like my son's car back. And I said, oh, I kind of figured you would. Tell me why. She said that her, her son's wife was not working with her on any level. That when her son passed away, she didn't want to part with any personal items. She didn't want to give his mother any memorabilia, any pictures, nothing. And she had just become very bitter and very hard to get along with. But God opened the door and allowed her to say, I have something of my son's now. And I impressed upon her to go gently not to be prideful or boastful, but just to say, I'm so grateful to have my son's car back. And it opened the door for a relationship for the two people. And I was so overjoyed to hear about it, even though I didn't have a car. And I still don't have a car. Everything that I've had has been terrible disrepair. Nothing wants to run. And that's okay. That's okay, because I've been here before, and I know what God is doing. God is opening the door for us to share the truth, to spread the gospel, to give people hope. Hope in a really messed up world. We live in a beautiful world, but it's full of toxicity. It's full of people that don't want to do the right thing. They want to cuss and scream around when the car doesn't run. They want to get mad when their lawnmower breaks down or when the water doesn't work. And boy, have I been frustrated because not only did the water quit working, the toilet broke. I've been flushing with a bucket. I've been washing in the, in the bathtub, washing the clothes. And man, it's a challenge, but God knows what he's doing. He's strengthening me once again to get ready for what he's about to do. And what he's about to do is going to be the greatest thing he's ever done. And I just challenge you today to remember that when things aren't going the way we want them to, don't get mad. Just remember that he's trying to strengthen you for better times when you see others around you struggling you'll be able to share your story with them. You'll be able to help them out. Be encouraged.